Thank you, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Still working. I can, I can hear it. I was worried I wouldn't be able to tell if it was off, but I definitely can. Okay, so, yes. Um, Stockers Lake, somewhere I think most people, or I imagine a lot of you, will certainly know. Um, well, let's, let's go. Let's go. So, what are we going to cover? Um, these things. You, you might be pleased to hear that I'm not going to go through every single bird that you're going to be seeing at Stockers Lake. Um, so, anything that isn't covered, I say, that you have a particular interest in, um, you can, we can have a chat afterwards, uh, or um, any questions afterwards. So, firstly, who's involved? Um, well, Stockers is uh, owned by Affinity Water, and uh, it's managed by um, us, the Hearts Middlesex Wildlife Trust. So, partnership's been going for, well, since uh, well, the Trust have had a long relationship with Affinity Water, um, but this particular project since 2015, um, and currently uh, in the management plan phase at Stockers, running up to uh, 2025. Uh, Stockers Lake is one of three sites that um, is part of the partnership. <coughs> Hillfield Reservoir and Springwell Rebed are those other two. So um, we work on site with the Friends of Stockers Lake, uh, who uh, do uh, some have a lot of local volunteer base. Some of you may be members of the Friends, and also the British Airways Club um, Angling Society. Uh, it's all. Yeah, we're, we're working together very well now, I'm pleased to say. Okay. So a bit of history, going back a few years. Um, when, when the area that is, is now Stockers was, uh, was a farm. So um, uh, after, after that, the, the Grand Union Canal was constructed and it essentially divided the, the farm into, or part of the farm off. Uh, Ringwoodsworth Gravel Company purchased the, uh, the land between the Colm and the Canal and began ex extracting uh, gravel. So, in yeah, 1947, Uxbridge Valley Water Company purchased the land. Um, that company eventually became, after a few different changes, Infinity Water. And uh, in the 70s, uh, wildlife conservation was designated to the Trust um, and, and yeah, we've developed stockers into the uh, the reserve that it is today. So Stockers Lake is designated a local nature reserve. Uh, it's also a local wildlife site, and because half, well, really about a third of it is technically in London, it's also uh, a sink site, so a site uh, for the importance of nature conservation. So when, when you walk around Stockers, you're actually going into London, into Pillingdon, and then back again into Hertfordshire. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty well-known birding site, I think. It just popped up on the, uh, the Hearts Bird Club with all the records quite often, um, most days, I think. Uh, so hence why yeah, a lot of people know it. And it, it, a lot of people walk around it. It's really popular. Being close to the Aquadrome, it's good parking facilities, cafe, toilet there. And so the parlour just meets the stockers, um, and there are thousands of visitors a year. So as well as just the general bird watching, these you know, BTO uh, web accounts, heritage census at stockers, um, seabirds count as well, and um, various annual annual reports are compiled, including uh, Steve Cart as well. So where exactly is Stockers Lake? Here, near uh, near Rickmansworth, just uh, just uh, west from Rickmansworth. Um, so it's it's one of a chain of lakes that form the Con Valley that runs from well, the Rickmansworth area right the way down the side of uh, London, of course. And um, so so on the on the map here, you can see that it's. On the, on the aerial photo, sorry, this is from the 90s, it's quite an old one. Um, we haven't done a lot of the work on the islands then. But you can see the, uh, the River Colne running uh, down the left side, which is the north of this image. 
and the Grand Union Canal on the, uh, on the other side. It's characterised by these parallel ridges, which you can see. Um, so I really love this, this aerial shot because you're, you're able to see why the islands have formed in the ways that they, way that they have. Uh, because the island, the, the gravel, they're gravel bubbles, gravel rejects essentially from the, the extraction process. So any that were, I don't know, too big, all the wrong sort of material were left behind in these lines. Any that were tall enough were able to, were, was where the, the trees developed and eventually formed, uh, formed these islands. And like, uh, like any um, gravel pit, once it's been quarried, or once it's you know, finished being quarried, the, um, if, if left unmanaged, all the trees will grow up and you're left with, um, yeah, with a, with a tree-lined gravel pit in not too long. So under the water it is very complex, uh, and so it's, a, it's great for fish. The islands are a great shelter belt for birds, so any prevailing winds um, get you know get blocked off. And the uh, I should tell you about what we'll find there. Okay. So yeah, in time after after Stoppers was was flooded, um, the hundreds of uh, water birds started turning up. So you can see a, a more modern map um, with, yeah, with the, just, just in terms of, in case you haven't been to stop, because I'm sure many of you have, as I say, if you have an aquadrome car park, it's probably one of the best places to get, you can walk down to the, uh, to the causeway here between Berry and Stoppers Lake. Um, So the Cole Valley is of national significance for its uh, wintering wildfowl. Um, in 2008, a report was commissioned which described the uh, wetland resource of the Cole Valley and to assess its significance to water birds. Uh, the, the study um, included all of the water bodies in the Cole Valley from Rickmansworth south to the A40. Um, and uh, it included it for uh, uh, shelter belts, places to forage, uh, plants and blooms, um, and 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 it also included that stockers support great fish populations too. So essentially, it concluded that stockers and broadwater lakes are the two lakes that are the best in the valley for overwintering wildfowl, uh, with with over a thousand birds in each. That's certainly true. And so, so that's the conclusions taken from that um, were because of the, the, the places that they the birds can shelter, uh, forage, uh, all the things that, you know, they need. And this was, this was a comment taken from the report that Stockers and Rural Water were the most significant refuge of roost sites, attracting almost the whole range of species in the valley. These major refuge sites are critical in that they enable birds to exploit a much wider area. So, and think of them uh, as a source, well, sort of source populations perhaps, but ones that they're attracted to, and from there they can move around. Uh, ducks foraging at night in other wetland areas. Uh, okay. So, the Con Valley, roughly is about 3,000 birds here, but that, that's that's late, latest data from this winter. Uh, but Stockers Lake was holding at sort of the peak over the past 10 years, um, 100 birds, which is as a percentage 43% of the Calm Valley. So it, this just demonstrates how significant Stockers is. So what's doing well? Shoveler and potchard. These this winter has shown that the, these birds are doing are doing very well, and um, and the trend is that shoveler are doing pretty good at stoppers. However, short stopping is certainly a factor, as with many similar water bodies in the valley. Um, short stopping is probably no, but is where, where Arctic breeding species will. Uh, when they head to the milder climates for winter, 
they no longer need to uh, travel so far um, from from their unfrozen lake, from, so far for the unfrozen lakes to allow them to find food. So it's not just ducks that uh, we're seeing this phenomenon with, with decreasing winter winter uh, numbers, but also uh, seabirds, wintering shrikes and swans, raptors. There are some that are doing better, of course, but um, but we, we certainly the trend is a decrease in these species. So gadwall, goldeneye, goosander, tufted duck, and coot. It's interesting because I mentioned potchard is doing quite well, but the national trend <coughs> is that they're increasing as a breeding species, but decreasing as a winter visitor. So perhaps our, this is just my theory, and I don't know, maybe we can ask the BTO what they think. But um, perhaps the, the, the locally breeding potchards are choosing to overwinter, whereas increasing numbers of overseas breeders are not passing over to the UK coastline. Maybe that's what's going on. Ah, okay. So this one is um, considering. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm also like Paul. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that old. Um, so I. I I've never really experienced a time when there were loads and loads of really interesting uh, birds like 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 wintering at Busanjo or Smu in the Kong Valley, where you get sort of. 10, 20 of them. I think those days might have been, might be gone now. Um, so I went to Stockers looking for it, and this is from the causeway. Just missed. It's all I could see. And I, I, this swan was just staring at me as I was looking for this smew. And it, I think it was mocking me. Um, I didn't have much chance. Um, anyway, as it happened, further I, I, I went to Springwell Lake uh, not too long ago. And I managed to get this picture, and I thought, now I'm going to enter the Parks Bird Club uh, competition. Can you see it? <laughs> that is the only bird photo in this presentation that I've actually taken. Uh, but thankfully, we've got um, uh, Dale Ayers, who um, takes a better one than I do, and I know uh, many of you probably have as well of, of, the, of the lovely smoothers and stalkers, so that, that's him, a lovely Drake. The Art of Deco Duck. But yes, decreasing, sadly, due to uh, the short stopping effect of thing of climate change. So yeah, it seems like this is going to be a thing of the past at Stockers. Anyway, to throw a few um, interesting uh, species in there, this is just a list of uh, ducks that have been recorded at Stockers to show. Uh, a wide variety that it does attract. There aren't too many rarities in this PowerPoint, I should also point out this. Apologies for something. Stoppers, usually, is the largest heronry in Hertfordshire. Uh, I say usually because there are other large heronries, you know, like Amwell, Wilston, um, Rocket Park as well. Uh, but it's the, the undisturbed nature of stockers um, that, that, that allows the herons to do uh, welfare. No more water activities. And also the trees that grow on the islands, of course, um, tall willows and birches in which they nest. So they're nesting up these trees, and you can see them regularly carrying sticks in um, this time of year. It's a great time of year to visit, visit now, um, because right now they'll probably be on, on eggs, um, these pale blue eggs, um, and uh, the Friends of Stockers Lake have started a really exciting um, project where they've got a, a camera up in the heronry. So hopefully soon they'll be able to um, stream that to a website. Um, for now we're able to get some uh, great pictures um, right up close to the heronry without disturbing the birds. Um, but yeah, so generally there are you know, roughly 30 to 12, 24 pairs um, in, in it in any year at Stockers. <coughs> so it was, it's, it's not just uh, just the her herons that are in the heronry, <laughs> with the egrets, as, as Murray pointed out uh, before, and cormorants also nesting, so you can get between four to nine uh, little egrets in recent years, um, increasing. But 
you know, what, what's going to turn up next in the heronry? Both of these species are, are, are being seen at, as Dr. Spoonbill uh, said the first first time um, in, our, in our area. Um, so on that map, it's a bit difficult to see, but you know, the, the top, the big blue line is the Spoonbill, then the dash line is the cattle egret, and the one, the, the faint one is, is, is great white egret beneath that. <coughs> Um, and you know these these birds are jointed herons across uh, the s south of the UK um, to breed. So uh, who knows? We'll see you next year. Yeah, we have a fair number of blue tailed piglets that stop us too, which do indeed nest on site. Um, but you can, and pretty much when you walk around, you're like very likely to see uh, or hear one. Um, it would be lovely if they decided to go to our kingfisher nesting bank, uh, which was purposely built for them uh, back in 2017. So far, but it has been used by birds. We've had great tits in it. <laughs> Maybe not quite the same. Uh, and also we have mason bees, which if you look, if you stand there at the point looking at the bank, you can see loads of holes right the way through it. Uh, so, so it's using by, used by animals to nest, which. Um, I'm satisfied with for the moment. So, as I mentioned before, with the marginal management, clearly you know, trees will shade out the light, and when that happens, you lose a lot of the diversity from the lake edge. Uh, to combat that, we uh, re reduce um, or uh, remove overshading trees, often pushing them into the lake and that provides a more complex underwater habitat for the, uh, for the ducks to um, mingle around in and feed on invertebrates and, and fish as well. So it benefits a whole, whole load of stuff, pushing trees in, um, something that I would certainly advocate for um, in the right places. Um, so this is the sort of habitat that we're looking for uh, with, with the dense sedge beds. We also reprofiled we, we re the margins over the years in places, um, which, oh, that's, uh, which um, has, has allowed a, a bigger area of, of marginal growth. So you get the dense root beds coming up, and there you can see an older tree that's just been pushed by the excavator straight over into the water, uh, providing cover for birds uh, and fish. Oh, here we go. So yeah, all the, all the things you'd expect um, in a well-managed margin. Um, I think there were, in, in recent years, you know, 10 to 12 pairs of reef warbler around stockers. And for those of you who know, know it, there's, there's not, it's quite a thin margin that we've got to play with. But, you know, if the habitat's there, then the birds will come. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I put it out water voles there, and some of you know, I, I can't really do a presentation without um, you mentioning water voles. So, uh, yeah, we, we have water voles around the coal at Stockers, um, and hoping that surveys this year will find that they've jumped over into the lake themselves, and we can find some nice water vole latrines and confirm that. Wet woodland is a priority habitat, it's a rare habitat um, in Hertfordshire. And, well, you know, is this another thing of the past? Yes, I hear the yes, I think. Um, you know, yeah, less responsive woodpeckers were, were, were used to be reasonably common, you can sort of bank on one every year at Stockers in, in some, some years, no, no, not, not even so 10 years ago. There'll be a pair excavating a nesting hole, drumming, um, but it might be me, because when I started, jo I joined the Trust, that's when the, the Lesser Sports Woodpeckers sort of disappeared, so I don't know what I did. Um, but, but also, um, Tree creeper, goldcrest, woodcock, siskin, lesser red pole, all of these things are lovely, all the trees, of course, uh, on which they feed. Uh, the finches do at least. I don't think woodcock feed on all the trees. Um, 
Yeah, so it's, a, so it's a, a, a very interesting habitat. And we manage it through occasionally felling a tree, but, but in recent years the storms have done that for us. Um, where where a big tree falls over, lets a lot of light in, um, but other trees are growing up to replace replace them. Sorry, I hope I won't be booed off by throwing a plant in there. But um, large bitter cress is a, is another heart rarity. Um, you can tell it because it's got these, these purple anthers in the middle, and uh, some because is is, is holds the vast majority of the Hertfordshire population for this species. Um, like like many uh, valleys, I suppose wetlands. Um, but hobby hobby is is yeah you can you can visit a few times throughout the spring uh, and, and autumn times. You can pretty much bank on seeing a hobby flying over. Um, as as they as they move up the Calm Valley, they're, they're usually. In, the, in spring, they're, they're, they're pretty quick moving through, but um, you, you can see them chasing the swallows, house martins. Uh, the, the swallows uh, nest very locally uh, in the stockers' farm nearby. So you get numbers throughout the year, but of course a peak uh, in, the, in the migration times. The house martins too, of course. Um, in yet yeah, autumn, then they're flying quite high, feeding on the dra uh, damsel flies, dragon flies. Now, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Very occasionally seen as stuckers, not every year, certainly not every year. But this structure here, you've already seen it if you've been there, that, that sort of thing that's in the middle, that's on a pole. Um, it was done a fair few years ago, but um, the idea is that we are, well, okay, imagine this, a female offspring coming back from uh, on migration is looking out, uh, potentially a young, a young bird, looking for a nest site as it saunters back down through the valley or down through the UK, I should say, probably. Um, maybe from Rutland. Well, yeah, looking for a territory and see a suitable nest, especially a nest that looks like it's been used before, then on its on her return journey back up, come back and check that site out, and maybe nest. Does that seem like a long shot? Well, anyway, exactly. If you don't try, you don't know. So. The previously used nest is most attractive, so so it, it's and yeah, so we make it up from brash that's locally found, and we'll build it up on, on the top of the platform, and then we will add some um, up, some you know biodegradable white paint, which looks like poo. No, so the ospreys will think that it's been used before, and a good sign. Why not give it a go? And that's what we're doing. Uh, this is autumn. Yeah, so in the past couple of years, we were putting um, a turn rocks out, and this is with the Friends of Stockers Lake Group. So the, the so turns will be nesting on the lake gravel, and um, last year we had. Uh, well, there was at least at least ten young youngsters um, growing on the nests. I'm not sure on the lakes as whether they were fledged, but um, I need to uh, find that out. Um, but we have, as well as as well as the floating turn rafts, um, we have groups of islands that are managed on rotation, so they're not all left as wooded. Uh, some of them are, uh, were, were cut down and reprofiled uh, a few years ago, and they uh, then so one year in any year. The half of the island will be cut of each island. Um, these attract the terns uh, to nest and sit on and squabble on. Uh, but the, the the actual rafts have the, you know, the uh, features uh, suitable for the young to hide under. You know? 
Here we go. So you can see the, the uh, so Cliff Buxton's photo, um, Buxton photo of, of the of the turns uh, with with, uh, with some chicks there, and the black headed girl sitting there looking outnumbered. Yeah, we don't have a problem with black headed girls. Um, really, at, at stoppers, um, they yeah they they tend to. That whilst they're, they're building in number, the new, the new rafts provide a good opportunity for the turns to, to nest. So, if they're put out at the right time, of course, then the gulls have started nesting somewhere else, the turns come in a little bit later, and the gulls start, and then the, the, they, will, they will set up their territories. Um, so, in future years, moving them around, instead of taking them to the bank, and putting them out again later on, has uh, as, as done on other reserves, um, may, be, may be an option. So, not just the terms that use the islands, of course, um, Lapwing. So, certainly certainly not significant numbers wintering at Stokers. 50 birds is a, is a good count at the site, um, flying around, but the great thing is, the views of Lapwing at Stokers you can get absolutely gorgeous. Because they're they're on the island really close, about about as as as, as far as maybe or well, closer than to the back wall, or even got that maybe to half halfway across this room. If you, if you get a, a scope on it, you bins on them in the, in the light, absolutely gorgeous. Um. And yeah, so. Red, this is one for a red, red breeding species in Hertfordshire, oyster catcher, um, and I think in recent years they have they have nested, they have successfully flown, not not as stockers, um, but they have had a go, and uh, the two birds seen fairly frequently. I assume it's going to be the same two year on year that, that are holding that local territory, and th thinking about everything in a, a wider context, it's not just stockers. That is the important thing. It's it's the surrounding habitat and the flooded fields next to it. Stockers farm fields flood every year. Yes, no, you know you know that's what I'm talking about. They they are a, a real hotspot for migrating uh, waders and so um, ring plover, little ring plover. Um, these sorts of things will will drop in, um, and oyster catchers certainly do feed feed on the fields. They'll pick up a worm and then fly back to the wooded islands at Stockers. Yeah, wooded islands. I don't know how normal that is, but um, yeah, they're certainly hanging around. Scrub is, yeah, usually, particularly for landscapers, an overlooked habitat. You know, you get lots of bramble, duckthorn, intertwining, climbers, all that sort of lovely stuff. The, 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 the we love, essentially. Um, but the scrub at Stoke is, is important for, for a whole host of, host of things, of course. And the warblers were, were, were mapped uh, during a, a breeding bird survey um, along with everything else in 2019. Um, so, so they were, yeah. considering the area of Stoke you know, between a canal and a lake and the, and the uh, river and the lake, there's not that much, there's not a great deal of scrub on site. It's not like some of these vast other sites in Hampshire. But certainly, uh, good numbers of black cap and garden warblers. If you, if you, you know, like me sometimes, try to work out different from black cap and garden warbler, go to Stockers and you can, you can try, to, uh, try to work it out because you do get good views of garden warbler as well, or as good views as you can hope for, I suppose. They fly, um, but they're not birds. Um, so at Stokers, I mentioned, uh, it's, it's a hot spot for bats, so particularly in the Enthusiast Pippus Trail. And, we, uh, and recent tracking uh, efforts from um, the Hearts uh, Bat Group, Hearts Minister's Bat Group, um, have in fact recently caught uh, well, 10 Enthusiast Pippus Trails in one night. This is a licensed tracking and ringing study. Uh, to show where they go, and we know that um, 
there were there was bats called the stoppers that were originally tagged in uh, Latvia and uh, Lithuania. Uh, we, that far as far as that. So it's, you know, we think of birds that are great, of course, uh, but bats, uh, these sort of female bats, are doing this very long journey too. Uh, it's great for dormentons over the water, um, and what well, eight regular species, um, probably more at stockers. And it's, it's great because you know, all the old trees, lots of bridges, um, local buildings, because it's near to the uh, Rickmansworth and urban areas. Um, plus, we've got 30 bat boxes on site. Um, so, all of that part and parcel um, to stop us being uh, great for bats. Uh, as we come to the end, um, I want to mention, yeah, people, because stop us is really important for people as well, and getting people interested in bird watching, young kids getting uh, with wildlife, so as part of the Affinity Water Project. We, uh, we, 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 we engage with huge numbers, well, lots and lots of people. So, so since uh, I've been with the project, um, we, we, we're uh, doing 6,500 people, and there have been um, almost 5,000 uh, volunteers, I think more than that now, volunteer hours um, across the affinity sites. And most of the engagement stuff does happen at Stockers um, through events, and you might have seen, seen us on the causeway um, on site. And a big part of the project also is improving accessibility on the reserve. So getting, um, enabling a wheelchair access, for example, around making the gates better, um, sign signage better as well, because um, it is a fantastic resource. And I wanted to mention one, uh, one, uh, one other thing. So um, I mentioned before how um, you know, Broadwater and Stockers are the two most important sites for wintering wildfowl in the Con Valley. Um, and so, th this, this quote is from a tweet that the, the Trust put out uh, recently. And so, HOAC, Hillington Outdoor Activity Centre, um, is, is being proposed to relocate to Broadwater Lake, which is the only triple SI um, in the Con Valley. And so, so it's um, something that we're very concerned about. Um, and the triple SI you know, part designated because of its winter and wildfowl. And so uh, this, this was the image that was put on a, a, a brochure. Um, so this is the southern end of the water. So it, it is, you're probably looking at a, a depiction there of the most um, important area of wetland in the Carl Valley for winter and wildfowl. Um, so it is something that we're going to be keeping tabs on. Um, and if, if there are any questions on that, um, and Tim can um, certainly uh, help, help to answer those. Because um, there probably will be a, uh, a proposal. OK. Why not? Why have time for one question? <laughs> OK, yeah. Could you tell how it's fed with water? Because the levels never seem to change on Yeah, so we, we, we think so we think that there there's a couple of things there. So we think that the, uh, there are springs that come up from underneath the crap of the gravel pit itself. Um, it's also fed, there, there is a there is a a, a sluice that it that is, maintains the high water levels or, or a certain level of water. Um, which is controllable. So after you know, it, it does it does fluctuate, but it's unlikely to go go down too low. It doesn't drop very quickly. That would be why. But yeah, spring fed. Where the um, South side, near uh, to the to the west of the wet wind. All oh, right, I've never noticed it. Thank you. Josh, the um, short stopping phenomenon, um, how do you see that affecting the significance of the lakes over the next 10, 20 years for wildlife? Well, it, given the continued tre trends in uh, warm winters, it's likely that those, those birds that did travel over are going to not 
do that as much. So, you know, generally speaking, it will be a, a, a decrease in the numbers <coughs> of uh, wintering wildfowl at stockers, but as, as a sort of long-term projection. Um, some species that are more hardy may, may will sh probably short stop earlier than those other ones. Um, so Shavala, for example, might keep coming over in racing numbers. But yeah, generally it will be a decrease in, in, in those species and it's, it's, it's being seen now. And I'm sure that you've probably seen decreasing in, decreases in winter and wildfowl on your local, local wetlands as well. Does that answer the question? Yeah, no, I guess you'll see a changing pattern and you'll be attracted other things in the summer, but it was more just thinking about the importance of the lakes in 10, 20 years. We're clearly nationally important now. What does that mean for their significance in 10, 20 years' time? Well, yeah, the, sure. Sorry. The, yeah the, these things are going to be national trends, so, so it will be affecting everything. And well, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's been studied whether the effects of decreasing numbers of numbers of wildfowl. Yeah, yeah. Um, an interesting, interesting point. But and if anyone has any, you know, open it open for discussion because you know it's a subject of interest. To be honest, I, I the reason I was asking the question is yeah. about the development of Broadwater Park and sort of Broadwater Lake and whether or not actually where the balance is lost. Will they still be a significant in 10 years' time? Where that yeah, well, I suppose with decreasing numbers, it would mean that it's even more significant. Thank you very much, Josh. Um,